Now, the Gaza Strip is one of the most densely populated areas in the world, with the same population density as London. And now more than two million people there are living with little to no food, water, electricity or medical supplies. The Palestinian Health Ministry says Gaza is facing a humanitarian and health catastrophe. The ministry reports more than 1,500 people have been killed in Israeli strikes, a third of them children. For more, let's cross to Marwan Jelani, Secretary General of the Palestinian Red Crescent. He is in Ramallah in the West Bank in the Palestinian territories. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to just start by asking you what you're hearing from your staff, family, friends, in Gaza right now? Well, our staff uh, are overwhelmed, stressed out, devastated. Uh, we have our hospital in Gaza City, Al Quds Hospital. We have uh, five patients on intensive care, plus additional patients who are receiving care there. And what's more, we have a number of people who have sought refuge in the hospital. They are not leaving. They are staying in the hospital. There is a total panic, total confusion. Uh, people don't know what to do. A lot of people are refusing to, to leave. And of course, our, our staff and volunteers are there. They are still providing the services in the hospital. We run the emergency medical services. They are also pro trying to do their best to reach out to those injured and those uh, who need medical attention. But it is, it is an impossible task. We just issued an appeal to the world. We are seeing a humanitarian catastrophe unfolding before our own eyes right now. So we do appeal for the, the end of this madness, the pause for the humanitarian community, the humanitarian organization to provide assistance, to get in Food and water are running out, fuel is running out, and on top of this order that came and, and just left the people stranded, not knowing really where to go, because there is no safe place in Gaza. And, and already, a lot of Palestinians living in Gaza were in camps without permanent homes. So what does this evacuation look like for them? Well, it's true. Three quarters of Gaza people are refugees in the first place. They are refugees from 1948 and their descendants. They live, as you said in your report, in the most densely populated area in the world. They have already evacuated many of them from the north to Gaza City. They are staying with relatives. There are more than 350,000 people staying in schools. Uh, where, you know, were run by Anarua, but I understand that even the management of those schools have left them there without any management of these shelters. So very soon people will have no water, no food in these uh, schools, which they have sought refuge there. And, and still they, they are now being asked to even go further and, and leave. So you, you're talking about one, one million people living in, 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 a, in a time frame now of about 10 hours, which is impossible. It is impossible to do that. And, and also what is more difficult is for us medical teams. What do we do with the, with the patients, with the wounded? What do we do with the people with disabilities? What do, do, what do we do with the elderly people? How do we evacuate them? We don't have the means, the roads are broken, and we don't have the fuel to run uh, cars and buses to get these people out. You mentioned that there are a significant amount of people who are refusing to leave. Is that because yes. they are heeding uh, the calls from Hamas to stay? Or what are the different reasons that are keeping people there despite the dangers? Look, what we are listening from people, we are talking about ordinary people, civilians, who have nothing to do with Hamas or any other political faction. There are people who have been evacuated a number of times, who, as you said, mostly are refugees in the first place, and who have already left their homes, sought refuge somewhere else, and maybe for the, th for the second or third time in these last few days. So they know, and they are asking, where do we go? 
this, there are people who have been killed while they are on the move. So many people are saying, look, let's die in dignity. Let's, let me die in my home rather than die in, 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 on the road where I have no place to go. So there is no safety. There are no safe havens. There are no safe corridors. There is an order for people to leave, one million people to leave in 24 hours while the bombardment is still ongoing. And there is no there is no instruction to say this is a safe place or this is a safe corridor where you can use uh, use to leave. And again, what they leave to the south and then what's next? People expect that even the south will be uh, after they move from the north, the south turn will come very soon and they will continue to be on the run for 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 endless number of days. I want to ask you, finally, what life looks like where you are in the West Bank right now? Because I imagine that since this war began, life has changed drastically there as well. Well, life has changed for us as, as, as uh, our colleagues are under, under constant uh, pressure, under constant fire. Uh, we have lost four of our colleagues from the paramedics uh, two days ago. So we are also stressed out. Besides this, we also run the ambulance service in the West Bank. And for the last few days, we have been dealing with seven to eight people who are killed every day. So we have to be there. We have to provide the medical attention and emergency medical service to those people who are also in the West Bank, where there are so many flashpoints. And especially today, there are so many uh, demonstrations. There are so many. Uh, confrontations between Palestinians and between the Israeli army in different places of the uh, of the West Bank. Marwan Jelani, Secretary General of the Palestine Red Crescent, thank you so much for joining us.